So again, welcome um, everybody to the second session of our tour through the um, Kunstverein Ludwigshafen. We are here with Marie, Bo ba Marie Buck, sorry. <laughs> um, hi Marie, it's so nice to have you. So um, she is an um, educational at the Kunstverein Ludwigshafen and we are here in all art is photography. And for this session now, we want to have a closer look to one aspect of this show. So Marie, you want to start? Yes, hello everybody. Um, so we are standing here just right in front of the exhibition hall of the exhibition displayed at Kunstverein Ludwigshafen named All Artist Photography. And um, basically to summarize the idea behind this show, which you can see here is to reflect upon the different kind of ways how photography has influenced the, our perception of the artworks. And um, we, in this short um, episode now, we want to take a closer look at the figure of André Malraux and the um, video by Dennis Adams, Malraux Shoes. Um, just to yeah, take a brief look at it. And so André Malraux, he's a very um, interesting figure concerning this subject, how art, how photography has influenced art, because he was one of the first who made, um, or who wanted to tell the story of the history of art through photographs. So you can see him here standing, can I just zoom in a little bit more? You can see here, a huge view of André Malraux, photographed by Maurice Charnoux. So where he is standing in his living room and just right in front of the layout of one of his, um, of his volumes of the Le Musée Imaginaire de la Sculpture Mondiale, so the imaginary museum, museum of the world sculpture. And um, so André Malraux, he is a very interesting figure with, with very different side, different ambivalent aspects around him. So he was a politician, French politician, French novelist, and an art theorist. He was the first minister of cultural affairs in France. And he, one of his major work he, he published was the Musée Imaginaire de la Sculpture Mondiale, the book he published in 52 to, 50, to 54. And um, for, for this book, he used photographs made by a photographer whom he did not credit it at all in his book. So it's also an interesting aspect. The photographer was called André Vigneault. And he, I will switch uh, to a better resolution of the better. And you can see them all lying here on the floor. The, the photographs he um, used in this book. But maybe um, before, we, um, we take a closer look. Maybe, um, Yasmin, you can briefly describe what you see. This was a photograph taken for a French magazine, Paris Match, by photographer Maurice Journoux. And um, what is your impression you get when you see André Malraux standing here in his living room? I think um, what is quite obvious is that this is a pure installation of his his himself as the god of the um, images and also he has the um, power to decide in what sense we want to see those sculptures because one specific um, thing about cultures uh, sculptures is that you can walk around and see them from so many different perspectives and here he, as you can clearly see on this big image of the person next to, uh, next to him, this uh, woman's head, that um, you have only one proper, correct way of seeing sculptures. And it's him who decides. So um, yes, I think it's a very um, powerful gesture. Also, he standing there in his nice suit with his attire and um, he is a yeah 
he knows how to handle all of this. So he is powerful, he's smoking cigarettes, so he's also a bit um, um, chilled and leisure, but uh, yeah, he definitely knows what to do and how to do it. And it's also, yes, holding the glasses in his hand, um, it's also maybe some intellectual um, habitude and yes, and this is all I have to say so far. Yeah, he also reminded me a bit also, because you made the allusion to the sculpture we see here next to him. With his whole posture, he makes like also, he resembles like a Greek statue, maybe Greek god standing there in contra posture. That's right. Yeah. yeah, very elegantly standing there. Yeah. And what I think is also interesting to see is how the layout of the images we see below his feet are changed or are, seem to be disordered where he's standing. So we have all these lines lying in front of us, but here we can already see his impact, the impact he has on the images. So these are very, very small details. Um, and all together with this bird's eye view we get of him, we, as, just as you mentioned, we see him as a very dominant and yeah, like an almighty man who has the power to decide over this layout on the floor. But still, what is interesting is also to, that we remember that this is a photograph taken by a photographer and not uh, by André Malraux himself. So we get to ask the question also, who was the person who decided how he depicted André Malraux? Was it André Malraux's own choice? Or did he ask the photographer to depict him like that? Or was it the photographer's choice maybe also who came into being to decide yeah. what impression we today we get of André Malraux also? That's true. It's always a question what we know about the photographer, what we know about the photography, and how we read the context. Mm -hmm. I mean, in this context, uh, context can you um, go a bit lower? So you can see also see the um, headline of the of the Paris Match um, issue, and um, it's in a context where you question about art itself. So you have to see all the artworks, you ha but um, at the at the same time um, you want to know about um, the person who's standing behind them. So it's really interesting the different aspects of um, reading this photography. And um, when we entered the show, we had it in the, um, in the foyer, in the, in the big version. And now we have the original context of the um, Paris Match magazine. So we as the visitors have different um, ways to get closer to this figure, Malro, which you can see since it's two times there, that it's um, very important for the show, um, All Artists Photography. And there is also an artist who was chosen by David Company, the curator of the show, to be also exhibited in the exhibition. And uh, his name is Dennis Adams. And he also took this photograph as a starting point for his video work, which lasts about 40 minutes, so it's quite long and Unfortunately, you don't get to see everything of it in the online preview. Um, but still, you managed to see a lot of it. And so he took the photograph as a starting point and imagined what could have been happened in this um, living room. And he imagined himself into Malraux's shoes. That's also the title of this video. So first, um, I invite you to have a look at the video. And I won't say any much further for the start and just have a view yourself um, because you can also imagine yourself entering the maybe yeah, maybe we can do that we can enter the exhibition space again from the outside when we see where it is located so here's the entrance and the video by Dennis Adams Malvo's shoes is just behind this exhibition wall here on the back so when you visit the show you see it quite at the end maybe of your visit uh, but still, as long as you're in the show, you hear it because it has a sound which is very, um, yeah, which gathers all over the place. 
And when I now start the video, I hope you have your sound well turned on because it starts uh, quite uh, loud. Finally, people will understand that my rage is connected to its fucking silence. Fuck, I shit. God damn it. So what we see um, at first is uh, yeah, an, an André Malraux in rage. So again, I repeat it, this Dennis Adams who takes the costume of André Malraux and who is like an actor playing the role of André Malraux. And he um, reenacts the space of the living room we saw in the photograph before. And he, um, he also, he takes he mingles like his own biography and the biography by André Malraux and um, facts or news act like actualities from the current art world all together and imagines a kind of monologue uh, which Malraux could have had in his head. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, yeah, this is, this is a very playful and subjective way to come closer to this very interesting figure who André Malraux who was really really interested in how to um, how to handle art how to get closer to art and how to um, res um, yeah re um, how to how to um, get closer to art by not being able to see it um, like you want to see it. Like sculptures, Greek sculptures, which are not um, here um, available for you. And um, yes, I think it's a very um, interesting and a very um, powerful video. You can see online the whole video. So only type in by Google um, Marus Shoes and you will see the 40 minute um, video by yourself and it's really worth seeing it. So we also saw the video started here now with this um, outrageous André Malraux and it is also kind of a straight of his personality because he had Tourette's syndrome. It was reported that he had it and that he had this uh, nervous tics and breakdowns and um, yeah, very furious uh, outcomings. And I just um, play the video a little bit longer so we can So we have uh, this very loud moment of the rage and now he's getting into this pensive monologous tone where he's very, yeah, he just brings out thoughts, which were, again, they were not any written documents by André Malraux, but it's all imagined by the artist of the video, Dennis Adams himself. And um, maybe I will just switch to another moment um, of the video where you can see how um, Dennis Adams, he imagined out, um, starting from this photography we saw before, how we started to imagine how André Malraux would, would have moved through this space. So it's again, he's repeating this very powerful way of stepping over the photographs lying on the floor, which is also, again, we're taking this dominant posture. Also, you see how he's standing right now there in this post modus of the video. So, uh, he's playing or 
we also we recognize that Dennis Adams also has quite a bit of fun maybe playing the role of Henri Malraux and um, I read in one of his um, interviews that he also he tried to understand how Malraux maybe would have reacted to our contemporary art world today and he also wanted to understand how maybe he also has some doubts and speculations or thoughts that maybe are quite similar to those Malraux would have had or how we can um, yeah, identify with Malraux also in this position. So maybe one example of the contemporary art world. Show now. Document is bent down size to be shaped apart. But I reinstate it can truly defeat this raving on and on about the recuperation of the avant garde as she crawls among broken ceramic domes with a Sony quarterback hanging from her body like an engorged butter. Yeah, so you, you can, all of these 40 minutes of the film, there are many more references and very, I think you need to see, watch it probably several times to get all of them and probably make it, do a lot of research work to understand all of them. <laughs> but um, I think this was also quite a nice reference also to our point of view where we are standing today doing an online guided tour also through an exhibition. And, which is part of a Biennale also. And um, where are we situating ourselves and why are we here and what do we expect to see? And um, how do we expect um, yeah, the, also that the exhibition is, um, yeah, is brought to us or how it is mediated to us? Yeah. So, uh, Yasmina, do you have anything more to add to attending the only a very nice word and invite i think to think about our situation right now how we um how we can get access to at all in these times and um we hope that you all um want to see more of the exhibitions feel free to uh, stroll around the um virtual tours and hopefully see you soon in real life thank you so much marie Buck. <laughs>